In this session, I am going to demonstrate how to use Enterprise Manager to configure a database to back up to a zero data loss recovery appliance. We are starting on the Enterprise Summary page in Enterprise Manager. This demo environment already has the ZDLRA plugin installed and both the ZDLRA and protected databases discovered. Configuring a database to back up to the RA, also called onboarding, is a two-step process. The first step is to add the database to the RA. Once the step is complete, the second step is to configure the database to send backups and redo to the RA. Now let's add a database to the ZDLRA. We'll go to Targets, Recovery Appliances, and select our ZDLRA to get to the ZDLRA homepage. Once we're on the ZDLRA homepage, we'll select the Protected Databases option from the Recovery Appliances drop-down menu. This page will show all the protected databases on the ZDLRA, along with their current backup statuses. This will be the first database added, so there are no databases to display yet. To add a database, click the Add button, then click the Add button on the Add Protected Databases pop-up window. You can use the search options to narrow the search. However, we can already see the database I want to add, so I'll just select it. Now, I select the database and assign it to a protection policy. I'll use the standard production policy, then click Next. We must specify the reserve space for this database. This is the amount of space the RA will reserve for this database's backups. The space needed to store the backups depends on the database size, change rate, redo generation rate, and the recovery window goal. As long as space is available, the RA will allow a database to use more than its reserve space. But if the RA is under space pressure, any database using more than its reserve space could have its backups prematurely deleted, even if they are within its recovery window goal. Enterprise Manager will provide a default value, but you can change it here if needed. I will just go with the default value in this example. The recovery appliance uses the virtual private catalog feature within the RMAN catalog. Every database must be assigned to a VPC user. Only DBAs with the assigned VPC user credential can back up or recover a database. This feature allows multiple DBA teams to share the same recovery appliance without having access to each other's backups. We only have one VPC user in this demo environment, so I will just use it. Access to the VPC user credential in an Enterprise Manager can be granted to other users besides the one onboarding the database. They can be added in the Credential and Target Access section. In this case, we do not need to grant any other Enterprise Manager users access, so I will leave it blank. Now click OK to add the database to the RA. Click Close to close the confirmation box. We now have our first protected database on the RA. Now that the database has been added to the RA, we need to configure the database to send backups and redo to the RA. We will navigate to the database homepage by going to Targets, Databases, and selecting our database. The search box can be used to narrow the database list if necessary. In this case, I see our database and we'll just click on its link. Once on the database homepage, 
I will go to availability, backup and recovery, backup settings. I need to log in with the sys credential. If there's not already a name credential in Enterprise Manager, you can create a new one here. I will just use the existing one. In the Recovery Appliance Settings section, I will select the Recovery Appliance and VPC user. There could be multiple RAs and VPC users to choose from but in this case, there is only one of each. I want to enable real-time redo transport for this database, so I will check the box. This will configure the database to send its redo to the RA automatically, as it is created in the database. This is the option that provides zero data loss. The RA is considered an SBT or tape device, even though it is physically disk storage since there is no disk mount point from the RA to the database server. We must set the host credential to the operating system database owner. If you do not already have a stored credential created in Enterprise Manager, you can create a new one here. In this case, I'll just use the existing one. Now click Apply. A warning will pop up about the need to bounce the database. This is usually required when real-time redo is first enabled to allow the database to read the wallet file. The VPC user credential will be read from the wallet file in order for the database to connect to the RA to send the redo. If the database cannot be bounced immediately, the backups can be enabled without real-time redo. Then real-time redo can be enabled later during a downtime window. Also, if this database is RAC, each instance can be rolling bounced, but this needs to be done manually not to Enterprise Manager. I'm going to click Yes to proceed with the configuration and the database bounce. This process takes a few minutes. You can monitor the, the progress by clicking on the procedure link and refreshing this page looking at the procedure steps. I'm going to pause the recording until the process completes. The procedure completed successfully. It took almost three minutes to complete. You can review all the steps in the box on the left. The database is now ready to be backed up to the RA. I hope you found this demonstration to be educational and useful.